on our first episode of Animal Diaries, we introduce you to some of our biggest reptiles. Some of the first videos ever recorded of baby rainbow snakes hatching, and going one-on-one -on -one with some adorable flying squirrels. All right, guys, welcome to Animal Diaries. This is the first episode, and the first thing that we're going to do is actually introduce you to a lot of the different animals that I got. So a big part of my life is taking care of these animals. They're just really, really special to me. And I'm hoping to show you guys that to bring you into that. But first, I've got to introduce them all to you. They're really incredible, and I really hope you guys enjoy this series. All right, guys, so welcome to my little reptile room in here. This is my garage, and I've got a bunch of different setups in here, a bunch of different snakes, reptiles. And today, we're going to be just looking at a few of them. Hello, snake. Hey, sweetie. Hello. Oh, goodness. Hello. How are you doing? That is a big, big snake. Well, she's probably going to wrap up when I try to get her out. So, you know, I'll just keep her like this. So this is snake. She's definitely pushing 12 feet at this point. And uh, reticulated pythons are one of the biggest snakes in the world. They can grow to huge sizes. And this would be a color wolf. This isn't what they look like naturally. But she's one of my favorite snakes. She's a great educational animal. And she's sweet, sweet. You know, never would bite me whatsoever. And uh, she mostly eats birds like quail, chicken, but she'll also eat small mammals, rabbits, and stuff like that. And uh, it's hard to keep up a snake like this. And that's one thing that a lot of people, a lot of people get these snakes and don't realize that they take a lot of feeding. Oh, that's all right, baby. Look at Snake. This is a thing that's heavy too. Probably about, she's probably pushing 30 pounds at this point. And uh, look at this. She's a lot bigger than when I last showed her in the springtime. But she's a wonderful snake, absolutely perfect. And she's great for, uh, for people that aren't super good with snakes because she's super friendly. Now, reticulated pythons get much bigger than this. In fact, she's only about mm, almost four years old at this point. And she is pretty big, but she can get over 20 feet easily. And her setup is pretty simple. It's a wooden setup, got a heater. It's actually got multiple heaters on it to keep her comfortable. And she's got a big pool so where she can go and soak. Reticulated pythons have a rough time shedding their skin in dry environments. So having a big pool that she can fully submerge in keeps her really, really clean and smooth. Awesome, awesome snake. Love her, she's great, she's friendly, and you guys will definitely get to see more of her in the future. But for now, I'm going to go and put her up so we can check out some of the other animals. Here you go, baby. Yeah, girl. Alright, so our next big reptile of the room, this is Moto. How you doing, buddy? This is one y'all haven't met before. Hey, sweetie. He's a good boy. So this is Moto. He's a blue tegu. And uh, actually, this was somebody's pet that they couldn't keep anymore. He got too big and he was just far too much for them to feed. And they actually started having issues with him that were starting to affect him. You can see right there, his nose is a bit rubbed. And it's actually healing up since I've gotten him. And look at this. See down his back? That's what's left of a huge scar that he had when I got him. It went from here all the way up, really up to the base of his neck. And it looks a lot better now. If you had seen it before, it looked really rough. But he's been doing really good with me. And I was very nervous when I got Moto. They told me, you know, he's a little bit aggressive. I'm like, am I going to be able to do anything with Moto, work with him? And he is perfect. He is the perfect animal. He's sweet. He's friendly. The only thing is he doesn't really like being held, which kind of, as you can see here, he's wanting to go back in his house. But he's really easy to keep. His favorite thing to eat is eggs. He'll also eat small mammals like mice. But most of his diet consists of eggs, which is just like wild tegus. So as you can see here, this is a pretty big lizard. Moto is a really big boy. And uh, by the way, I did not name him Moto. That's just the name he was given, and uh, I didn't feel like changing it. But he's super friendly, very food aggressive. He loves to eat. And that's one of the reasons that his previous owner thought that he was very aggressive, is because when they would feed him, he would get super excited. And that's why they thought that he was aggressive. But he's really, really friendly. And you can see, he's probably about four feet long. So it's a pretty decent sized lizard. He's a good boy, though. And their tails actually can break off. So that's something to always be careful of with these guys. Okay, it's all right. All right, well, he does not like being held, so I'm going to put him back in his cage. Here we go, bud. Oh boy. Good boy. He really likes his little box set up here. And it's a pretty simple setup. There's nothing fancy to it. But uh, eventually, I'm going to start expanding it and making it a little bit nicer. 
And I'm thinking this summertime, I haven't had a chance to make anything yet, but he's gonna have something outside for him to play in as well. Because it's, a lizard of this size needs a lot of space. And while he is really good about the space that he's been given, I wouldn't mind getting him something big for when he's outside. That would be something pretty cool. So he's gonna go back to basking, and uh, we're gonna get to our next animal right over here. All right, guys, well, this is one you've actually met before. There's two animals in here. Have a look at this. These are legless lizards. Now this one right here, this one I've had since I think before I started the channel. Her name is Basil. And this is one that you guys have actually seen before. This is one that we found in an area where he could no longer stay. And uh, as you can see, he's doing pretty well right now. And uh, this one's name, this one's name came from, a, from an age where this would have been relevant, but I did name him PewDiePie. Haha, I named a legless lizard PewDiePie. You know, it's comedy. But uh, these two are both doing great together. And I'm hoping that this one is a male to where we can breed them. That would be incredible. And uh, their favorite things to eat are crickets, mealworms, and stuff like that. But they're both really, really, really great. And you can see, look at this. Look at how stiff they are. That's something that legless lizards do when you pick them up. They just kind of sit there, all stiff like, whereas a snake would kind of be moving around. So very cool little fellas. Now for their cage, it's kind of just a light soil that I keep missed it all the time. And uh, just a very simple setup, easy to keep. They'll also eat scrambled eggs, which is kind of convenient for me as well. So they're both really great. This one's been doing great. I know some of you guys will want an update on him. And he is doing absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna put him back in his cage. They've got a simple setup here, 40 gallon tank with a bunch, a bunch of stuff for them to hide under along with their normal stuff. So I'm gonna put this back. And you can go under, here you go, go in your little log right there, get the little hole and go in. Boop, boop, boop. So yeah, those two have been doing great. And now, we're going to get to another one that you guys have seen before. There he is, little fatty. Hello, little friend. Oh, look at that. He's doing a cobra for us. Look at that. That's pretty cool right there. So this is the hognose snake that we found few months back in late summertime and he is absolutely beautiful. We got him out of the area because it definitely wasn't a safe area for him and he's actually been doing really good. He's grown up quite a bit. Look at him. He's doing his little hood thing. He's doing it more now than actually when we found him which is kind of crazy but um, really beautiful snake. Now they only eat toads so he's only eaten toads for me so far and he might never eat a mouse but uh, that's one of the things with hog noses that make them a little bit more difficult to keep. But it's pretty easy for me. I know where to find a lot of toads. So he's been eating really good. And as you can see, he's grown up quite a bit. And he could end up being any kind of color. And I'm really hoping that he's a bright orange color when he grows up. But uh, he's been doing really good. So really friendly snake. And I keep him in a little sandy environment. The only thing with that is he kind of missed it off a little bit more frequently than normal. But he really does enjoy it. He's doing really, really well. Very content snake. And he'll get a lot bigger than this. He's still very young. Just a yearling, really. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more of this guy in the future. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and put this little guy up and check out the next snake. Right, so you can go back in your little house. And we've got one more snake that you guys are familiar with. And it's actually this one right down here. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to find her. Now this is a snake that you guys have been definitely bugging me about to see an update on. Rightfully so, this is an incredible snake. Probably one of the most special animals that's out here. Now she's a fossorial snake, so I give her a lot more bedding to where she can dig down. Oh, there she is. Hello. Hello, hello. I think you guys know what kind of snake this is now. Hello, sweetie. There she is! Look at that! This is her little rainbow slugger. She's got dirt on her face still. This is probably one of the most amazing snakes that I've gotten the pleasure to deal with. And this is a rainbow snake. Now we did show you guys the video of us finding this snake. And the only reason that we kept this snake is specifically for research. This is a snake that's not often found in this part of the country. And uh, it's a really special animal. And it's also an indicator species because it only lives in places where eels are found. And the really awesome thing is, this was a pregnant female. And we're going to get to showing you guys the babies in a second, but that was another reason that we kept her. It had never, ever been filmed before, rainbow snake babies hatching, or at least not to my knowledge. And uh, we've been able to film all kinds of incredible firsts with these snakes. We got to film her babies, and it's been an absolutely incredible experience getting to deal with her. Now, she's very similar to a mud snake, except for their diet. 
You've got a sharp tail like a mud snake, a face like a mud snake, and uh, the reason that you're never going to see this snake kept in captivity is because it's extremely difficult. And uh, right now, you can see she's a little bit thinner than when we first filmed her, and that's because, for one, she was pregnant when we filmed her, and for two, right now it's a little bit wintertime, and I'm keeping it a little bit cooler in her enclosure to kind of mimic that a little bit, but uh, absolutely beautiful snake. Her name is Iris, uh, which I believe was Latin for rainbow, so that's why I named her that. But uh, absolutely gorgeous snake. She's wonderful, and I'm really hoping to get to study her more. And uh, now I want to show you guys what you've really been waiting for, the babies. Now, for those of you who don't know, we actually came across a gravid female rainbow snake this past summer. And uh, I figured it was an extremely rare opportunity, special animal to see. And I was like, well, let's try and do some research on this snake because there's so, there's so much mystery about this snake, which that's not something that you normally hear a lot of when it comes to snakes, especially in the United States. It was a huge relief when she ate, and she ate almost immediately. I'm like, okay, good. She's going to do great. She's eating. She's really healthy, and she's doing great. And then she laid her eggs. Now, we knew she was pregnant, and that was a big deal. I'm like, goodness, this is insane. She just laid, I think she laid 24 eggs, and I was like, if we can get most of these to hatch out, that would be great. So, started working on that. And then I realized after doing some research, because I was researching beforehand, that there was no footage anywhere of baby rainbow snakes hatching, whether in the wild or in captivity. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I think the reason is, it's just because they're rare and they don't get to see it, because they hatched out. We were able to hatch baby rainbow snakes, which when I saw that, it was just a huge, huge success. I'm like, dang, we're getting to film baby rainbow snakes hatching. We're going to get to upload this for the first time. But then I had the struggle to having to feed them. I'm like, getting the adult to eat, you know, the adult has a weird diet, but she ate once we got it. So I'm like, we just have to find the right food for these snakes. And I talked to many professionals, people that have been studying rainbow snakes, uh, many people that had done studies in the 1980s and the early 1990s. And then I had a couple of people say try salamanders. And, and look at this right here. I got one with me. If you have a look at that, I don't know if you can see that very well. This is a little salamander, and uh, one day I put one of these in their cage, and the next day, it was missing its tail. And I was like, did I just accidentally find what these things eat? And sure enough, I came back one day and I instantly checked on them, and one of them was eating a salamander. I put them in a container with multiple salamanders, multiple rainbow snakes, and one of them was eating it. And I got to actually film that, which was incredible. First time that's ever been filmed, I think, too. And I'd offered them a lot of stuff. I'd offered them soft shell crawfish. I'd offered them a young amphiuma. I'd offered them a bunch of different stuff. So you can imagine my relief when I walked in one day and two of them were eating tadpoles. Goodness, that is a huge, huge relief. And even after that, I had some that wouldn't eat tadpoles and I still had to keep on salamanders. And yes, they are an absolute struggle to keep, but it's totally worth it. I really want to see what this can become with these guys but I've been told that there's a very low chance that they're gonna survive and in any other circumstance I would have let these snakes go if these were baby mud snakes or some kind of other snake I would have let them go the reason that I'm keeping these snakes is specifically to study them to research them and if one or two of them survives that could be huge it could be a huge deal for rainbow snakes because that means we could try to properly keep these guys in captivity and actually learn more about them there's not exactly a guidebook on how to keep a baby rainbow snake alive so it was very difficult. I had to do a lot of research just to keep these guys alive. And yes, I'm going to continuously update you guys on the baby rainbow snakes. And we're going to go check out and see how they're doing right now. All right, guys. So this is one of the few little indoor shelves that I've got. Got some milk snakes over here. And we'll show that another time. But this is what I want to talk about. This is our little rainbow snake shelf for the babies. They're all numbered. And there should be one of my favorite ones in this one. So these little trays are good because it keeps it humid and a little bit easier to tear for. Hello, bud. It's buried down. And there he is. Look at this. He looks pretty cool right now. And uh, bright colors. He's in shed right now, so he's got a little bit of a duller color. Fat, fat, healthy. He's doing really good right now. Tongue flicks. Now these snakes are extremely difficult to take care of. and. You know, we already lost a couple of these guys, but overall they're doing pretty decent. And look at this little dude. Oh, he's trying to get away from me. Super strong little snake. And uh, normally they'd be spending some time by the water. However, they do seem to like more of the topsoil kind of setup. 
when I tried to give them more water in their caves, they really didn't like it. They didn't like any kind of water like that other than a small bowl of water. And, you know, occasionally I put a tadpole in there for them to catch. They eat very, very often, but only small meals. And it's just a very, very cool little snake. Looks a little bit different than the parent, but as you can see, beautiful little guy. And I'm going to go ahead and put him back. Bright, bright stripes. And we're going to be updating you guys on these pretty consistently. So he's got his topsoil, his water bowl, and I normally take him out of this to feed him. I've got some little containers down there with water that I'll put him in when I feed him, specifically so I can video him. But uh, yeah, this is their little shelving setup, and hopefully I'll be keeping you guys up to date on stuff with them in the future. Hello, little boy. Hello, Momo. Now for those of you who do not remember who Momo is, Momo is a young possum that was rescued. Unfortunately, his mother was killed, and she had pouched young. And there were two surviving babies, one of which was Momo and one of which was Trash Cat. And unfortunately, Trash Cat passed away. However, Momo has been doing absolutely incredible. I remember when he was only about this big and he had to drink milk every four hours. Now, he eats pretty much everything. So you guys have met Momo before, but he has grown a lot since we last filmed him. How you doing, buddy? Get your tail out of there. Now, Momo was a rescue. He was rescued as a little baby. And uh, he's doing really good now, as you can see. He's got a box, his hammock, a little tube down here, and his food and water bowl. Oh, but he's coming. Hello, bud. Hello, bud. How are you doing? So here's Momo. He's a sub-adult right now, so he'd technically be an adult. But uh, he's not fully grown. He'll probably double in size from this. And uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to stay in this outdoor enclosure. He seems to love his enclosure. He doesn't seem to mind it whatsoever. And uh, I could probably leave the door open and he'd come back. But this animal is definitely not afraid of people whatsoever. And I would definitely not call him wild at this point. And he's a really good climber. He doesn't like being held. However, he's fine with just sitting here. So, like, see how I'm not actually holding him right now. He's actually just sitting on my arm. And uh, they will use their tails to balance on stuff. He's got really sharp claws. Like, I can actually feel that every time he walks on me. They're very sharp. Yeah, Momo's really sweet. And uh, we'll be giving you guys plenty of... Ah, it's on my ear. Plenty of updates on him. He eats pretty much everything. One of his favorite things to eat is actually fish. Fish and all kinds of different fruits. And uh, I keep just normal kibble in his cage for the day for him to snack on. And uh, one thing you always got to watch with possums is that they don't get overweight. Because possums will definitely overeat. Now possums don't have a long lifespan. They only live like three years, maximum four. So they don't live very long. But uh, hopefully during that time he can be a great educational animal and an ambassador for possums. Possums don't need any kind of um, conservation assistance whatsoever. They're a very common animal that do well in multiple different areas, including urban areas. However, people need to understand that these animals aren't really much of a predator and they're not much of a threat to them. Yes, they do steal food. However, they're not too big of an issue and they're not a mean animal whatsoever. And that's what I want Momo to be able to get across to people, that possums aren't mean little monsters. They're actually quite sweet and uh, really interesting animals. And while they're sometimes a little bit ugly, I still like this little guy. He's very fun to take care of. He is scratching me up. So I'm going to go ahead and put Momo back. He can go back to enjoying his dinner. See, buddy? Alright, guys. So right now we are in the flying squirrel enclosure. It's a pretty nice little enclosure for such a small animal. And if you have a look in here, it should be... Ah, yep, there they are. Look right in there. So right now these guys are sleeping. They are very nocturnal. What I mean by that is they don't come out at all during the daytime. And that's one of the main reasons people don't actually see these guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm coming back up and go back to sleep. They're a very sweet animal. But this is not the best time to view these animals. The best time to view them is at night. They're very friendly. They're very social. And we're not going to get to see that during this part of the day. Oh, here we go. All right, guys, well, right now, we are in the flying squirrel pen at night. I got some treats for you. The lights are spooking them a little bit more than normal, but uh, they should warm up in a second. Now, we've got four flying squirrels in here, three young ones, and one adult female. And they're very cute, and they're very friendly most of the time. They'll let you scratch them. Hello. Now, as you can see, they've got all this extra fat, and that's actually their wings. They've got, like, this wing suit 
built into them. Then basically that's what wingsuits were built off of, was how flying squirrels work. And what they'll do is they can glide hundreds and hundreds of feet uh, in the forest. What they'll do is they'll jump and they'll spread that out and they don't fly like a bird. They just glide to another tree or glide to the ground. Now one of the four in here does not actually like me too much and I think that's him right there, that's Twiggy. And uh, he's really, really shy so I just need to be a little bit more cautious around him. And there's a couple of them in here, hello. These are the little wicker basket things and their favorite thing to do in these is actually to, uh, to break open their food. Normally I'd give them peanuts and all kinds of different little nuts for them to break open and they'll sit inside these. I'm going to put the little treats in there. Hello buddy. Oh, here we go. Hey sweetie. What are you doing? As you can see, they breathe really fast. You want some treat? And this is full grown for most of these squirrels. Uh, the little young ones will get a bump bigger. However, not too much. Oh, hello, little cutie. They're like the size of hamsters, and they're very sweet. And uh, if you raise them from a little baby, they really love you. They get really attached to you. Look at the cutie. This is one of the little babies. Hello, little cutie. Another little baby right here. This is one of my favorite ones. Oh, it's okay. Hey, sweetie, how are you doing? And uh, this cage wire doesn't hurt them whatsoever. It's actually really tough and rigid so they can grip onto it well. And what they'll do is at night, they'll go and forage around here. I'll leave all kinds of different foods and stuff for them to get. And I'll normally leave a little patch of peanut butter and I'll leave peanuts and apple in here. So they'll come and get that later. Here's our water bowl. They've got stuff to climb on. And I'll occasionally drop stuff in here for them to nest with. And what they'll do is they'll go and shred. So I'll drop paper and uh, threading and all kinds of different little fibrous stuff down here. And they'll go and rip it up and they'll put it in their box. And they're most active at dawn and dusk. So if I come out at dawn, they're all out having fun, digging around. And if I come out at dusk, they're especially out. And uh, you know, this is just the best time to film them at night is when they're kind of calmed down, but they're still out. They're not sleeping like they are during the day. But as you can see, they're not really out foraging or anything. They're just kind of climbing around a little bit. They'll be eating and drinking tonight, but then they'll actually go back to sleep sometime in the middle of the night before uh, waking up sometime early morning. Yeah, really special animal. I'm glad we're getting to show you guys this. This is the time to view these guys. And uh, yeah, they're very cute. All right, so that's it for this episode. And uh, after every single video, what I'm gonna do is a quick recap of everything that's happening right now, things that I'm working on. For right now, we got to show you guys a lot of the animals. Snack, hognose snake, legless lizards, Moto. Moto's still healing up. Uh, his nose is having a little bit of an issue healing because it was so torn up. But uh, it is starting to look a lot better. Everyone's doing good. Everybody's eating right now. And uh, I'm still waiting for eel season to roll back around so that I can feed our rainbow snake again. Because uh, right now, nobody's catching eels. And uh, the babies, of course, they're doing pretty good right now. I will continue to update you guys on them. But, uh, you know, don't expect them all to survive. Once again, that's a really tough snake to keep a hold of. And uh, everybody's doing good. Momo is doing great in his outdoor enclosure. He's really enjoyed it. And the flying squirrels, doing perfect. Easy animal to take care of. I might want to try breeding them. I'll have to get another male or something like that, but uh, they're doing really, really well, and I would love to breed flying squirrels. They're not an endangered species or anything like that, but it'd just be something really cool to learn about because they're just a very special animal. So really hope you guys enjoyed this first video, and I'll see you next time.